Hello, this is Todd Luck, and this is a review of The Rise of Ultraman number three from Marvel Comics. So let's start with the cover, and the cover is actually one of the better things about this issue, at least in my opinion. Um, I, but I do have kind of a split feeling about it. So if I didn't know what Ultraman was, someone took a, the flashy thingy from Men in Black and wipe my memories or the you know evil science patrol user memory wiping pods on me from this comic um, then I would think that this is a pretty effective cover this is actually really well rendered and does its storytelling for what's happening on the cover very well I can feel the tension I understand that Ultraman is surrounded by these guys pointing cable guns at him and you know it's pretty eye-catching but um, first of all this doesn't appear in the story at all which makes me wonder what's going on that none of the covers reflect the interiors uh, and also you know knowing what Ultraman is actually about um, this seems kind of silly Ultraman is a giant who fights giant monsters Having him human-sized, surrounded by cops, it's just weird. So, <laughs> again, I, I'm not sure, you know, it's a well-done cover. I just don't know if it's a well-done Ultraman cover. And also, if you'll let me go on a tangent for a couple seconds, this is something really can't be captured on video, but if you feel this cover, it's very flimsy. It's actually flimsier than the paper on the interior and this cover just feels like it's going to be very easily damaged um, and that's basically how Marvel does their covers nowadays and I don't really understand it because a lot of what they're selling is the cover you know a lot of the reason people are buying this is to get like the variant covers or sometimes the main covers you know to display or for investment or, you know, even as a reader, I don't want to damage this thing. So I don't understand why their cover stock just feels so much cheaper than what it used to be and their competition. I mean, I review American Mythology Comics, and that's a super small company, and their comic covers still feel like comic covers. So I don't know what's up with that. And so if you see my reviews of the first couple issues of this miniseries, you know, I haven't necessarily been having the greatest time with it. Um, I found it to be kind of a series of cliches that I've either found kind of boring or tedious or silly. But here's the point at which we're just getting to a series of storytelling decisions that are just really making me scratch my head over and over again. And so we begin with a really strange scene. So last issue ended with Hayata finally merging with Ultraman and it knocked him out. And so they take him back and they run tests on him and they say they have detected energy off, coming off of him. And I don't know what that means, but I assume if we translate it into actual human speak, that would be radiation. And they say they don't know if it's dangerous. So Hayata is still in the clothes they found him in, in a bed, completely exposed to everyone around him. No one is wearing suits that would protect them from being exposed if Hayata had radiation or some kind of extraterrestrial vi virus. None of that. Just so strange. And then his first reaction when waking up is to jump on top of the bed, which is just so weird and silly looking. And the guy in charge, who is most likely replaced by an evil alien, um, who is very trans transparently sinister, uh, even though Hayata doesn't, sort of doesn't seem to be picking up on it all, all the way, um, tells Hayata not to run off the balcony, which again is a really weird thing to say because the balcony is like very visible here and Hayata's eyes do work, so I'm not sure why that was said. And of course, here is the guy in charge of the science patrol. Again, most likely he's been replaced by an alien, uh, giving us a totally not evil smile. It's, it's kind of cartoonish, to be honest. 
And so here's a scene in an interrogation room where they're letting Hayata talk to Captain Muramasu, who is thankfully still a hero in this version of the story. But this is so strange. So they're talking in an interrogation room and what looks like one-way glass here. And they're talking, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, and this is the only time in this scene this happens, there's a voice through the glass that responds to Muramatsu. It's just so strange. I've never seen anything like that in an interrogation scene. It's just like they're talking and all of a sudden a voice from nowhere that they never show us who says this um, responds. And then they just kind of ignore it and keep going. It's just so strange. I almost wonder if there was a miscommunication with the artist and there was supposed to be someone in the room with them and it didn't get drawn and they just needed to get that word balloon in there anyway. I don't know. It's just weird. And then finally, we get to an action scene with a monster at long last. But the dialogue in, the, in here is so weird. Like, okay, so there's this guy and he's under attack by a monster. And so he runs up to Hayata, does this big exposition dump. And he ends it with, so you can take a hike and then runs off. Keep in mind... This is a guy being chased by a giant monster. Does this sound like dialogue that would come out of your mouth if you were being chased by a giant monster? So you can take a hike. We do at least get a nice convention sketch of Ultraman when he transforms. Probably the nicest looking thing I've seen from the main artist. But unfortunately, Ultraman is only human size. This isn't necessarily dealt with like it should have been. I mean, I, I would think Hayato would be a little weirded out that if he turns into Ultraman, he's not the size that he saw Ultraman at. Um, but they do indicate that there is something wrong with the way they merged because Ultraman was injured. And um, I don't, so I don't know if this is something that they intended to do or if this is, you know, because there was a problem with how they merged. But regardless, I'm not a big fan of Ultraman being, you know, this size. I just, I just don't like Ultraman as a human-sized character. Um, I know it's done in the show, and I don't like those episodes. So. Um, you know, Ultraman, you know, in the show oftentimes has powers that just, you know, come out of nowhere, you know, when he needs them. And that, that is one of them that happens in some of the later series is, I don't think this was in the original series, but someone will have to chime in. Um, I haven't rewatched all, all 40 some episodes of it um, to refresh my memory, but um, the fight scene here is just kind of okay. I'm really kind of, the, the minimalism of the art is kind of wearing on me, the minimalism of the backgrounds and stuff. Um, I kind of wish we could have gone with a different art or, artist or a different art style at this point. And so this fight scene is basically just a back and forth between the monster until Ultraman zaps him. It's honestly kind of boring. And the unfortunate thing is Fuji mentions that the monster can turn invisible, but we never see it, which would have been, made it a much, much more interesting fight scene. It appears that the only reason this is mentioned was that that was the information given to the writers about this monster, but it just feels like this monster is interchangeable, picked out of a hat, and is just completely independent of any of its own background or behavior that we saw on the show. And that premise that they mentioned last episode of the monsters coming through because of negative emotions actually ha seems to make things more boring and not more interesting. So what happens is some person feels angsty, so a monster will show up and chase them. That's it. And the monsters seem to be interchangeable. There doesn't seem to be anything particularly unique or interesting about any of the monsters. They just were like, hey, let's just put this one in here, this issue. Um, so it's completely taken away the, again, the, the unique backgrounds or circumstances, behaviors, etc., that made them interesting in the show. And honestly, it just seems kind of a silly concept. I mean, are monsters going to be 
chasing around a bunch of, you know, angsty goth kids or something. I mean, is that, is that going to be what, what the whole series is going to be? And so, yeah, I'm just not getting it. I, I, I don't get this mini series, And I'm still going to hold out that, yes, it doesn't feel like Ultraman now, but at some point it probably will, and maybe that's when it'll start working for me. Maybe, but that hope is kind of fading as we get into this. Um, I suspect by issue four, four, and definitely by issue five, we should get some kind of giant monster battle. I don't know if we can wrap it up to the point where the Science Patrol will become something that resembles the Science Patrol from the show, or if it's going to be like evil Science Patrol. <laughs> um because this is clearly a setup for an ongoing series, and I just don't know exactly where this mini series is going to leave us. Um, but I'm going to keep trucking, guys. I'm going to get all these issues. I've gotten all the comic books published of Ultraman so far in America, and I don't plan on stopping yet. So um, I will bring you reviews of the rest of the series. So like and subscribe for more videos. And until next time... Who in the heck jumps out of a bed? See ya.